The 6.5 is on the road here at AWS reInvent. It has been a great show so far. I mean, there is infrastructure, software, services, and surprise uh, AI. Uh, but as Daniel, as we have been saying for, what, two years now, when it comes to enterprise AI, getting your data and data management uh, in line, literally getting the data next to the compute and services that is a must have for any of this AI goodness and for what it's worth, any goodness anywhere. Yeah, absolutely, Pat. It's great to be back on the road here at uh, AWS reInvent. It's always a big year, big show, lots to cover. It's a infrastructure, choose your own adventure. And as you said, there is a lot going on right now in terms of how companies are getting all the data on-prem in the cloud and everywhere in between in the right kind of order to be getting access to all that compute goodness. And that is a big theme here, no surprise, at this year's reInvent. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, Dan, we throw around uh, this 80%, 70% enterprise data is on-prem. But as we saw this year and throughout this AI journey, Oracle is making moves to get their database, literally database, service, and hardware inside of multiple public clouds in addition to their own OCI. And we're here to talk about Oracle Database at, at AWS. And we brought in the main guy uh, to runs all of this stuff. Karan, welcome to 6.5. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to have you here, Karan. I, I'm excited to talk to you about this. You heard Pat and I in the preamble. We're both pretty enthused. This is a big infrastructure moment. I imagine this is always a big moment for you. Not not Oracle Cloud World big, but a pretty big moment because AWS is, of course, one of the biggest infrastructure players out there. And a lot of Oracle runs on AWS. And that's been something you've been really focused on. And of course, you know, you've announced this year, I think it was maybe it was uh, earlier in the year. I'm trying to remember exact timing, Karam. But uh, and, and Pat and I said, Heleth has frozen over it yes. uh, you know, at first because like I don't think everyone necessarily expected. And and now yeah. you can see, though. Go ahead, Pat. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I used actually used that term on CNBC yeah. um, where you had Matt Garman and Larry Ellison on stage. And I actually use that term. Sorry. Yeah, no, I was quoting you. Yeah. Here. That was it. That yeah. was that was not an accident. But, uh, <laughs> but um, you know, Karam, why don't you start off talking a little bit about the catalyst there? You know, what really drove uh, OCI to you know develop this partnership with AWS and kind of how are you thinking about this whole multi-cloud approach? Yeah. No. Thanks. Firstly, thanks for having me. We are super excited. I think, you know, in a span of about twelve months, we've we didn't think we would be here, but we are here, right? We 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 snagged Azure about a year ago. Actually, to this day, uh, you know, in about a week's time, it was our first region that we went on live with Azure. And then, you know, six months later, we announced Google. And then, you know, in, at Cloud World, it kind of came together in a perfect moment where we had Matt on stage with Larry, and we we talked. You know, if you think about it, Larry hasn't had anybody on stage for four decades, right? Um, so it was a fairly significant moment, I would say, you know, AWS being sort of the, 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 the leader in the space, of course, from a cloud infrastructure standpoint, um, it made absolute sense, uh, for us to partner with AWS. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I think we, we, of course we, we have a cloud and there, there are certain things that make our cloud better than others and not so much. And so we can compare and contrast, but really at the end of the day, a lot of customers have access to Oracle because they're. Their entire business runs on Oracle, whether they're building an application, uh, you know, using some of our industry apps, whether in utilities or retail or financial or healthcare, or whether you're running simply your data in a mission critical database in Oracle, whether it's on Exadata or a VM or using Rack or anything like that. So most customers critical data lives on Oracle technology. And, you know, we don't want to force customers to pick our cloud. We want to make sure that our technology is available to customers anywhere they pick it, even if it's on-prem, right? We want to make sure that it's a, a, a ubiquitous a, a application of technology across anything. We should not be the reason why a customer certainly picks one cloud or the other cloud or whatever. 
Um, there's certain reasons why we think our database offering is better on our cloud, of course. But again, we've also tried to make sure that those sets of technologies also make their way into the other cloud providers, which is why the reason we've actually implemented our database offering through other cloud providers such as AWS is by actually placing a physical um, extension of OCI within the confines of an AWS data center. By the way, that was the big uh, one of the you know the emoji uh, head exploding uh, when you did this uh, with Azure, because very infrequently uh, will somebody allow anybody else's infrastructure into their public cloud because the way that they design it uh, is so dialed in, uh, and that was a big deal for me. So I think that is not only a testament to the power of the Oracle database, but also the power of Oracle Exadata uh, at, at the same time. So that was a, a huge uh, takeaway for me. And, and I remember just being on broadcast video and, you know, you try to explain the significance of it to somebody who's not necessarily uh, tuned in. Uh, but I think it did did come through, particularly when you repeated it with uh, Google and then AWS. So I have to ask, right, mm -hmm. uh, what is different and unique about Oracle Database at AWS uh, from uh, Oracle Database at, at Google Cloud and at Azure? No, that that's that's a that's a fair question. I think I think there's there's a very nuanced, I would say, answer to that. In some ways, there's nothing that's different. And in other ways, <laughs> wait a second, wait a second. That's not what I was expecting. <laughs> no, but, but that's the thing, right? In in some ways, everything's different, right? So, um, uh, of course, like to begin with, right, the region availability is going to be completely different, right? So there are customers that that pick certain cloud providers for their particular region sets. And then there's customers that have picked their regions on AWS. They have a very different, uh, you know, availability domain strategy, as an example, right? So I think region uh, region differentiation is is absolutely one. Um, you know, we talked at Cloud World actually uh, once we launched, uh, once we announced AWS, the fact that now if you include all of the re uh, public cloud providers together, we are in well over 180 regions. Right. Like that's just like unheard of. You can get Oracle yeah. technology anywhere in the world, right, through any cloud provider. Um, and so I think region region differentiation is going to be one. The second part of it is we're actually developing a very low interconnect between the footprint that goes inside AWS data center, the, the like our cage, our deployment of OCI and directly in between the EC2 platform. So we're developing a super low interconnect between our deployment within their data center to the rest of AWS platform because customers are going to run their applications on EC2 or other PaaS services. And the kinds of applications that customers are developing on Exadata are extremely latency sensitive. Yeah. So we want to make sure that there's a, uh, you know, there's, there's certain constructs that customers can use, whether it's grouping of capacity, whether it's low latency. And so we're developing that low latency interconnect between the two, two sides. And then second, we are injecting a lot more um, integration into the broader spectrum of AWS. So, for example, zero ETL. Uh, for example, uh, you know you can move data around so that it's directly accessible by other AWS PaaS services, whether it's analytics, whether it's you know uh, other types of services, whether it's AI. So, if you are in Bedrock and you want to be able to access your Oracle data, you're going to be able to pick your Exadata database and directly inject that data in and get intelligence out of it. Um, there's things like, for example, backups, we're going to have default backups to S3. So there are certain things that we are doing with AWS to make it much, much easier for customers to integrate their database, uh, their, their Oracle database directly into the ecosystem of AWS services and which is why they picked AWS. So I think from that perspective, it really comes down to the actual differentiation that AWS pitches. Now, Going back to my earlier comment about everything is the same, the database offering itself isn't going to be any different or better or worse. In fact, if anything, the, the, the value proposition of this offering is that the autonomous database service and the Exadata database service is identical, not just across AWS and the other cloud providers, but also OCI. It's, it's the same service. Yeah, so net net. You can standardize if you're an enterprise. So a typical enterprise has two, two and a half. I don't know how you have two, two and a half cloud service providers, but 
it's just an average two to three, uh, you can standardize an Oracle database and, and then d depending on which one of the public clouds are 2.5, you can then um, differentiate and leverage their services. You can leverage, you know, for instance, their AI services and you can activate that data inside of that uh, Oracle uh, database. Yeah, I mean, the, the core constructs, right? Joint support. Uh, joint sort of uh, uh, um, operational cadence. Like we also provide, because again, this is an Oracle service at the end of the day, it's still managed, run, operated by Oracle yeah. uh, itself, right? But there's there's a direct correlation between the AWS services and the, uh, the Oracle side. You're also able to use all of the benefits of having an Oracle contract. So if you have a support contract with Oracle today, your usage on AWS through Exadata or Autonomous Database is directly uh, uh, applicable to your support reward. So you can essentially burn your support bill down to zero yeah. uh, if you wanted to, just by using your existing commitment on AWS. Well, of course. <laughs> so, so, Karan, uh, first of all, I really like the partnership and I like the strategy from you and your team because I always thought it was sort of why play the make them choose game and take a part of the business, even if it's sometimes it ended up being more when oftentimes it could be an and type of strategy. And of course, we all know that the cloud consumption or cloud economics is land and expand. So the better you service them, the more likely, even if you want to eventually move them all the way onto the cloud, you're still going to be better off getting them there first. So I thought those are really sound strategy. It was good decision making. And I think it's paying off because you basically, you know, you removed any sort of isolationism where you've kind of said to the customer, it only works well this way. Now you're saying, choose your own adventure, whatever way you want to do, you, you know, we're going to work with you. And so I think that's great. Um, can we talk about this year's reInvent? Because obviously the mm -hmm. announcement came earlier in the year. Yep. It's building up. I'm guessing you're starting to get a good sense of customer adoption, enthusiasm, excitement. What are you announcing here at this year's reInvent as Oracle? Uh, you know, first and foremost, right? I mean, uh, it's been absolutely incredible working with the Amazon engineering teams. I think the collaboration across the two organizations has been incredible considering our past histories across the two companies. I think, you know, super smart people across both ends of the spectrum and we've sort of come together. We announced this thing in September. We're already announcing limited availability in our first region um, in, in East US, uh, which is, you know, such a short amount of time between when we actually announced the partnership, which as you can imagine between two large companies, getting through all the legal and the paperwork and the negotiations, getting all that done to the point now where we've landed hardware and we actually have customers in preview running on our, on our first region. Um, I think that's a very proud moment for the both companies. So uh, basically we have limited availability in our first region across, uh, you know, um, uh, two sites uh, and, and we'll expand and announce expansion of uh, additional regions over the course of the next couple of quarters. Um, uh, I think that's kind of the big one. You know, you can now simply go and launch an Exadata if you want to. And it looks like it's a native service inside of AWS. Uh, you know, it should lo look no different to other kinds of services uh, that exist inside AWS. Um, the purchasing mechanisms are all there. So you can go and essentially purchase or talk to your Oracle rep or your Amazon rep and purchase it through a private offer and then you can just go ahead and start using an exadata database Karan, do you have any um just sort of as a final question on the announcements and, and and the progress of this have you had any sense of sort of the expediency of adoption you know your limited availability how quickly can you expand capacity i know i saw larry throwing out some pretty big numbers for his ai regions like how quickly can you build this out to support because there's a lot of Oracle out there and a lot of Oracle out there on AWS infrastructure. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good question. I think the thing that, you know, we are where we are because of the investments Oracle's put into our own regions, you know, to, to sort of slightly give you a little bit of context, we've been working on not just scale up, which is kind of what you're talking about with Larry's AI infrastructure space, where it's like, you know, hey, here's how big of a cluster we're making and that sort of stuff. But we're also doing a scale down strategy right? Where we can fit a rack, we can fit a whole region in like three racks, all of our 200 plus services, et yeah. cetera. So what that means is we've developed so much, 
we, we've sort of invested in so much of a scaled down strategy that expanding into another cloud provider isn't, isn't very hard for us. Like it's just another child site deployment for us. We can literally yeah. take the exadatas, put a dark fiber, put it into their data center and it just works, right? The work actually comes from the integration between AWS and Oracle to make sure that it's seamless for the customer where it's just as simple as create an exadata, create a PDB, create a CDB, right? And all of the things that happen underneath the covers where when you create an exadata and you do a query or you put the data in your database, all of those logs start flowing through Cloud, uh, CloudWatch and all these other different tools. That's where all the work comes into play. Now we have all those features available in limited preview now, but it shows you like between, you know, September and like, I guess now uh, reInvent, we've only had a couple of months to actually create all this work and do all of these things. And so I'm just really excited about the possibilities in the future of all the different types of integrations you could do on Oracle technology. Yeah, no, this is great. And Karan, I want to thank you so much for joining us here. I know uh, AWS reInvent's a busy event. And of course, you've got a lot going on because you've got all the clouds to worry about and uh, so much more leading uh, OCI over there at Oracle. Let's have you back on the show soon. We want to get an update from you on everything that's going on. But uh, thanks again and uh, have a great uh, reInvent. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And thank you, everybody, for being part of this 6.5 on the road. We're at AWS reInvent 2024. Hope you all had a good holiday. You're back at it. Lots going on. This is infrastructure. This is AI. This is so much more. But for Patrick and myself, it's time to say goodbye. See you all later.